Ooh, yeah, we're gonna lift it, baby. Good morning. It is Mornings with Mary, and I have all my fun little things going on this morning. Today, we are gonna talk about respect. What does it mean? How do you get it? Ooh, how do you give it? Yes. So let's do that. Let's talk about respect. So it's me and you and the big R word. Wow, what was that one? I have no idea. Where did I go to get off? (gasps) There we are. Hey, how are you? Good morning. It is Thursday, which means it's the day before Friday, which means really nothing when you homeschool because it just is another day. So it is just another day in February, which means we're a day closer to Valentine's Day, which really means nothing. I can't eat chocolate or drink alcohol. What's the point of either thing, right? Nothing. But today I want to talk to you about respect. And respect is really an interesting thing because people say you can't get respect unless you give respect. Well, how do you get respect? Like, I get a quart of milk, right? I go to the store, I purchase it, and I have received it. How do you get respect? It's really not something that you get. It is something that is given and then reciprocated. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like... All the time. I read this article this morning. I was doing some research before starting this. And the article said, how to get respect from your children. As if you can go to like the kitchen refrigerator and open it up and pull out respect and then pour it. And miraculously, you have respect. No, that's not how it works. So what you have to do is you actually have to model respect for your child. Now, our society, we are not taught how to respect our children. We are taught that we are the ones that are in control because we are the adults. And what you do, I say. Hey, good morning and welcome to the U.S. here from Germany. Today we are talking about respect. And I was just reviewing how respect really isn't something that you get. What you get is a tangible item. Like you go to the store and you get milk. You and I might get almond milk. Other people will get cow milk. You go to the refrigerator, you pull it out, and you pour it on something. That is getting. Well, respect is not something you get. Respect is something that is reciprocated. So when we're discussing respect, especially respect for for children or for others, it's really something that we ourselves have to model and to give. It means respecting someone else's opinion, even if it's not the same as yours. It means Accepting that, accepting that their body is theirs. Accept the fact that they have their own boundaries. Teach them to have boundaries around themselves. You know, a lot of times I've watched parents tickle their children, right? My dad used to love to tickle me, and I'd be screaming, stop, 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 and I'd still be laughing. So he thought, well, this is funny. I'm going to continue to do this. No, no. Laughing to tickling is a natural response. It would actually cause me to have asthma attacks. That was not respecting my boundary. I was saying stop. And if you do not listen to people's words, if you do not respect the word stop as a parent when they're little, guess what you're teaching them? This is going to sound probably really crazy to some of you, but you're actually encouraging a rape culture because you are teaching the male, if it's male to female, not to respect and listen to the word no. And you're teaching the female, no one's going to listen to you when you say no. You are actually teaching disrespect in that moment. It's actually something I've had to talk to my husband about because I'm like, that, that's not cool. Like you are teaching her to not be heard. You're teaching her that her words have no power. And what is respect about? It's really about accepting where that other person is and honoring it. And so many times as parents, we don't do that. Um, I don't know if you've been to Disney, but I've been to Disney, any amusement park, and you're going to see the parents like dragging their kids by the arm, right? And yelling at them. And the kids are exhausted, they're tired, maybe they don't even want to be there, and the parents are screaming at them, well, I paid for this, you're going to do this, you're going to have a good time. Dude, man, no, they're not. You don't bring a three-year-old to Disney World, I am sorry, unless you've got a really big stroller and they can take a nap. Part of respect starts really, really, really way, way back. Hey, thank Manuel, wow, true words, yeah. You really have to think when you parent, what is respect. How do I show respect? 
if your child is hitting you, like they go through this in their toddler ages, right, where they hit and they scratch and they bite, it's because they don't have language. But then parents get all upset. They're disrespecting me. No, 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 they're not. They're not disrespecting you. They're communicating in the only language that they have, which is primitive. So as the parent, it is your responsibility to understand the developmental phases of your child. It's not your child's job to understand their developmental phases. They're still growing up. They're still going through it. A toddler cannot sit down with you and say, Now, Mommy, I'm feeling very frustrated with you right now. I really wanted to have that toy. Yeah, no. They're going to hit you. They're going to bite you. It's what it is. It's your job as the parent to teach them vocabulary, but do not expect it to sink in right away. Like it, It's not going to happen. It's just not. It's time after time after time. It's listening to their wants and to their needs. It's being able to actually know beforehand because you know your child well enough that you sort of like see these cues coming up. Like Sarah, when Sarah was little, we used to call her Jack-Jack from The Incredibles because at the end of the movie, Jack-Jack turns into this like wild, crazy, flaming child, right? Like gets totally pissed off and burns up into flames because he's been stolen from his family. Well, that was Sarah. And if you stayed too long somewhere, like she would just totally freak out and melt down. And my mom didn't understand this. She had like no way of comprehending this. And she kept saying, well, you keep leaving after dinner. You don't help me clean up. You don't, you don't participate in any of this. And we kept saying, well, mom, she's, she's going to melt. She is at the end of her, at the end of her zone. So we decided one day that we were going to stay and we did stay. And we allowed Sarah to have a Jack Jack moment for my mom because we kept trying to protect my mom from those moments and not have to have her deal with the screaming child because it makes her uncomfortable. She has her own, her own triggers from her own background. And so we let her have a Jack Jack moment. I will tell you, my mom has never since asked us to, to stay when the meltdown is coming. It was that traumatic for her, <laughs> no, but it was something that we did purposely and that we had discussed beforehand. And Sarah was about 18 months old. So we really couldn't discuss it with her but as the adults we talked between each other and said okay this is what we're going to do so that we can not have this happen in the future but we did that because we knew her behavior and part of respecting someone is knowing them well enough to know their behavior you need to listen to their words you need to watch their body language communication is only seven percent verbal that leaves 93 percent for tone and body language guys if you do nothing else do some research on body language and tone. It is basic sales stuff. So if your kid is like this, this means, yeah, you're not getting through. Like, F you, all right? I'm not going to listen to you. I really don't give a shit what you're saying because they can't receive. And in order to be able to receive, they have to be open and relaxed. And what does that mean? You have to be open and relaxed. You can't sit there and talk back to them like this. That's not respectful. All right. So as you're going through and you are parenting and you are really, you know, trying to figure out, well, what's going on with this? Why is my t child ta talking back to me? And yeah, let's discuss talking back. What really is talking back? They're having an opinion that's not yours. Thank God. Like they're a whole other person. They aren't you. They are totally allowed to have a different point of view. Totally fine. What they're not allowed to do is be disrespectful about their point of view, which is dissing yours, right? I have friends that have totally different views than me. It actually makes for really interesting conversations and friendship. Why can't you have different views than your child? Why can't your child be a completely different person than you? It might make it a bit more difficult. Stretch yourself, honey. Stretch it. Like, move forward. It's really okay. Right? Think about how you treat your partner, your loved ones, other adults in your life. If they were, let's say, lagging behind, not wanting to go somewhere, would you look at them and say, come on, hurry up, you're, you're making me late? Or would you phrase it a little differently and be like, hey, you know, we really got to go. How can I help you get out the door? Chances are, yeah, you're not going to talk to the, the peers in your life the way you talk to your children. And the way our society here in America talks to their children as, as if they're less than. And yet we expect them to go into adulthood and trust themselves and we want them to have opinions and we want them to be able to think for themselves but what do we spend their entire childhood doing telling them not to think for themselves 
just to follow directions to sit down and shut up and do as I tell you. Well, how is that respecting them as an individual? It's not. The brain fairy does not come at age 18 and descend all this knowledge upon them. And suddenly they know how to act. And suddenly they have this whole entire idea of how to be respectful in an adult. Bullshit. Bullshit. It is a lifetime of learning all of these skills. And who do they learn it from? You. They learn it in society. Let's talk about TV shows for tweens and teens. <coughs> Excuse me. They are probably the most disrespectful thing with canned laughter at points of verbal abuse. Watch them. Watch Disney, Nickelodeon. Um, gosh, what is that? Um, my husband watches it all the time. Um, the one with the neuro, not the neuroscientists, they're like the rocket scientists. Um, the Big Bang Theory. That's what it is. And he and Sarah will sit there and watch it. And they think it's funny. And I just look at both of them like that. That's like verbal abuse. Why are you laughing at that? that? That's not funny. Our entire society encourages verbal and emotional abuse. Yeah, sit down and actually listen to the programs your kids are watching. Watch the body language. Actually, you know what we love to do, Sarah and I and Lizzie? We used to turn off the volume and watch the body language of the actors and try to figure out from the body language what was going on. And then we'd turn the sound back on and we'd listen to, we'd close our eyes and we'd listen to the tone of voice. And then we'd discuss together, well, what was really going on in that scene? Was it respectful? Was it disrespectful? If it was disrespectful, what was disrespectful about it? Was it the words? Was it the body language? Was it the, the tone? And if it was respectful, how was it handled? Because our children, let's face it, they learn from social media, they learn from television, they learn from YouTube. We can't believe, we can't pretend these things don't exist. They exist. And that is their world. We need to wake up. We need to get into it. They cannot meet us in our world where we would, you know, rewind the tapes with a pencil. Um, and we would like press record and we'd hope that the radio guy didn't talk over it, right? We had to buy entire albums just to listen to one song. They don't. So we need to step it up and get into their world because their world is the one we're going to live in. They're not going to live in the past. We need to step into the future. And we need to look at the fact that they want a different world. They want the ability to step into this new time and learn respect and be respected and have different innovative ideas. The world is changing so fast right now. My God, you can order socks in 14 seconds. Did you know that? You could be like, hey, Alexa, I'd like a pair of size 6 to 11 socks can, from Amazon. Can you do that for me? And 14 seconds later, you're getting socks delivered to your door like the next day. How did I buy socks? I decided I had to get socks, and then I had to get in the car, and then I had to drive to the store. Then I had to walk through the store to find the sock section, which, by the way, why is it always like in the middle of nowhere? It's always with the bras and panties, right? And I don't always want to like hang out in the bra and panty section. Sometimes I just want to get socks and go. And then I'd have to stand in line. And if you're at Walmart, forget it, you're in line for at least 20 minutes. And then I have to drive back home. So this is almost like an hour just to buy socks, right? Their world, 14 seconds and it's there the next day. So how do you find respect in all of that? You respect the differences. You embrace their world. Don't ask them to come to yours. Go to theirs. Talk to them with dignity. Talk to them in a way that you respect what they're saying. You don't have to agree. You can agree to disagree. That's totally fine. But talk to one another in a way that you would want to be spoken to. If you wouldn't open your mouth and talk to your child the way that you would open your mouth and talk to a peer, sure as hell don't do it. Don't do it. Do not treat them less than. How will they learn to be an adult if you don't teach them? How will you teach them to be an adult and what it's like to be an adult and how to be respected if you don't treat them that way. Does this make any sense to anyone? Like, why is it that we think it's totally okay to hit children? That's great. Hey, we're going to spank them. We're going to smack them. We're going to get them in line. But if I did that to you, I'd be brought up on assault charges. Yeah, think about that for a second. So it's totally okay to hit your child, but not totally okay to hit an adult. Why? Oh, well, hey, I used to spank. I'm, I'm not saying I haven't done it. Sarah's never been spanked. Lizzie, 
yeah, I had the fly in hand before I knew better, All right? Um, and then I started to think, like, what does this do? What is this doing to her? What is it teaching her? It taught her nothing. You know what it taught her? Disrespect. It taught her that those in authority have the right to hurt me. And guess what that taught her? Fuck you. It taught her to not trust. It taught her that she can be hurt, that it's totally okay by her mother. The one person that would do anything to protect her, it was totally okay to be hurt by her. She shared with me the other day something I had never even known that happened. She had shared that when I was a single mom and she was much younger, I had to leave her with my parents. I had to work a lot. That's what single moms do, right? That my dad would just smack her across the face all the time. And, and basically, she'd be like three or four years old, and she'd be having a three or four-year-old moment and crying because she wasn't getting her way. And he'd be like, yeah, well, you want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. And drag her through the store or smack her. She's almost 20. She never told me. And when I asked her why she never told me, what she told me floored me. She's like, Mom, you used to spank me all the time. What difference did it make? It was just a different part of my body. Holy shit. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, as they get older, and once you start to change that dynamic of a lack of respect and disrespect to your child to respect of your child, their expectations change. And you get to a point where you, you can share these things back and forth. And I could honestly and truly apologize for what happened. And I could accept the blame that I owned, that I had not raised her in a way that was true to me. I did what I thought everybody else told me to do, what the doctors told me to do, what the psychologists told me to do which was put her in her place, and it never felt right. And this is the result, that she lives with those scars. I would have much preferred the world gave it to her than me. I kind of feel like if it's parents at home, that needs to be their safety place. And I've learned that through the hard knocks of life, right? It's reality. We can't go back and change things. All we can do is go forward and make new decisions. So if nothing else, I hope these morning sessions really just get you to think about things differently. You don't have to take my viewpoint. We can totally agree to disagree. I'm totally cool with that. But think about it. Think about, well, how am I respecting my child? How am I disrespecting my child? How are you respecting yourself? Because let's get honest. If you are not respecting yourself, you sure as hell can't respect someone else. It all starts with loving you. You cannot be the best parent you can be if you haven't healed you. And it's an ongoing process. This is not like you wake up one day and you get respect for yourself. You're not going to go to the grocery store or Walmart or any other store. And there on the shelf is a book that says respect. You can pull it off and like digest it. No, no. You have to start digging in yourself. You have to start learning to respect yourself. Listen to your body. Listen when it needs sleep and hydration and proper nutrition, not some bag of potato chips and a handful of nuts and saying I had a carb and a, and a protein and a salt. That, that's bullshit. No. Like really eat good food. It makes a big difference. All right. You need to start honoring the parts of yourself that are broken and loving the parts of yourself that are broken. And a phrase that I was given that has helped me tremendously, I'm going to share it with you. I've shared it in another video, but I definitely want to share it today, is I love myself and I accept myself even though I don't understand myself. And that has really helped me better accept parts of myself that I, I don't always like. Um, I believe we are all a, a process of growth in all moments. And I also use this phrase on my kids. I mean, they'll hear me say, look, I, I love you and accept you, but I don't understand you. And that gives them the freedom to be able to be who they are. I don't always have to accept. It's really okay. I don't have to understand. I'm sorry. I don't have to understand. I do have to accept. I don't understand my husband. I really don't. Like, when he does laundry, he leaves piles of it on the floor. Why can't you put it back in the, in the laundry basket? But really, does it matter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I let it go. Let things go that aren't going to matter in five years. That is how you respect someone. You respect that they come from a different place, a different culture, a different way. Even if you speak the same language, it's still a different culture because they were raised in a different family, right? 
And if it's your child, it could still be a different culture because they could be completely different than you. Completely different. And that's okay too. You don't have to understand them. You have to accept them. And that is the beginning of respect, is learning to accept and not put other qualifications on it and quantifications on it. Do not say, don't give like a, a report card with your love and with your acceptance. No one feels good about that. No one feels respected. If you worked at a job like that, what would you do? You'd quit. If you think about your home like a business, right? Like you are the CEO, right? Because if you're the mom, that's generally what you are. You generally run the whole thing. Sorry, dads. It's just what it is. Like if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? That's, that's the saying. Um, but think about this. You have a sales and marketing position, right? That's how you get people to do things, how you coerce them to do it. No one likes to think that they are coercing people to do things, but you are. It's just what it is. But you can do it in a way that offers respect and dignity. You don't have to be an asshole about it. And you've got accounts payable, and accounts receivable. You have an entire company that you run that's called your home and your family. So run it like you would run a business. Would you be a jerk boss? If so, go get some training. Right? Would you be that boss that comes down on everyone and micromanages and tells them what a crappy job they've done? Shit, if you were, I would quit. I'd be like, mm, no. But guess what? Your kids can't quit you physically until they can move out. But they sure as hell can quit you emotionally and mentally and verbally. And guess who's in charge of that? You. You are that boss. So be the boss that you'd want. Be the one that, hey, you go to them and you say, I have an issue with this. Can you help me with this? Communicate. Take lessons. Do reading. Do research. You do not have to repeat your past. It is your life. Make better choices. You don't have to redo what's been done. And you can change it at any point, on any day, at any moment. The power is all yours. Shift your mindset from I'm the boss to I'm here to help you learn. I am here to help you move forward. I am your facilitator. I am your mentor. As their authoritativeness and their big time boss, you can't teach them anything but control is at the top. And you can't teach them how to move forward at all. Ooh, do we have a guest speaker today? Do we? Maybe. Okay, I have to get off the chair. Oh, I'm just wrapping up actually. So my guest speaker would be Elizabeth. We were talking about respect. And so I was saying how when you, when you, um, when you don't have respect for the other person, oh, look, there she is. She's coming in. Hello. Hello. Got to move the chair. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. But how, when you don't have respect and when you are, like if I come at you as the parent and you're going to do as I say, oh, and like not that. as I do. Yeah, like that. What did, how do you feel about that? I mean, do you really want to help them? Do you want to work with them? No. No. What do you want to do? Smack them. Yeah, yeah. So it could be the same situation, and I'll go to you and say, hey, Liz, I need your help with the dishes. Can you help me with this? And you'll be like, yeah. Yeah. But how would Dad phrase that? Do the dishes. Yeah. But, like, with this horrible body language and yeah. tone. And yeah, and it, it doesn't mean. make – yeah, and it's like I'll look at him and be like, dude, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, don't you – don't you – you wouldn't talk to me like that. Don't talk to our children like that. They are human beings. They, they have Thank opinions. You. They have – you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, he, he's getting trained. That's the best I can say. He's like a, a work, of, work in progress, right? Because he came from you are the child, you do as I say, you are seen and not heard, and everything you do is all about me as the parent. Yep. Yeah. And so I come from a completely different world. I have changed my views. I have grown into this. No, it's not about me. This is your journey, your life. Something for you to discover. So this one here, I don't think that... No, yes, there is a piece of your face you haven't pierced yet. Your cheek. You, yeah. didn't, you didn't pierce your dimple. But I think there's been facial piercings like everywhere, someplace on her face at some point in the last two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And whatever, okay? It's her face. It's her self-expression. It's not about me. Do I have to understand it? No. Do I have to want it myself? No. No. But do I need to accept that this is her way of expressing herself? Yes.
Okay. So this is where respect comes in. I don't have to understand it. I don't even have to like fully support it. I just have to support her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I gotta be honest. We know when she's in the bathroom a long time, she's got a needle someplace in her face and we'll knock on the door and be like, Oh, what are you piercing today? It's what it is. Hey, I haven't done that in like weeks. That's okay. That's a long it's a start. Time. I know. It was like every day a new thing was coming in. It was pretty exciting. We never knew what she'd come out with. Mm-hmm. It was very exciting. But the whole, the whole gist of this is basically you have to respect yourself before you can respect your child. Mm-hmm. And that's a journey. Like I said, you're not going to go to the store, pick respect off the shelf, download it, and suddenly have it. Okay. Yep. So if you need a coach to help you with that, there's actually someone on right now who'd probably be really good at that. So Mr. Shipwood, if you raise your hand, if anybody here is looking for a personal coach, I got to tell you, he's amazing. So go talk to him. I be- I'm going to give the completely wrong website. So if he wants to put it in the comments, that would be awesome. Um, he's fabulous. But find someone for yourself and then work on the relationship with your spouse and with your children because it's something that you both have to do together. It's totally okay if you're on different parts of the journey, like I'm farther along than Rich is, yep. but he's trying. He's getting there. I mean, they had father-daughter night last night and watched a movie together Yeah. and apparently looked at golf shoes, which made him very happy. But Elizabeth, not her thing. No. No, not mine either. But, but if it's something he's passionate about and he likes, I'm not going to act uninterested. And right. Like, I don't want to look at that. Right. It's I'll a, be like, okay, cool. Can you tell me about this shoe or the difference between these two? And yeah. Ex- team engage. Right, because what is that about? Respect for the other person. Yep. You don't have to like it. You yeah. have to accept and support it. Yeah. The only thing you should not at any time support is harm to themselves or harm to someone else. That's it. Other than that, suck it up, buttercup. It's not about you. It's about them. Yeah. It's about them finding themselves, discovering themselves, being able to have the confidence that they can do that and that you are their safe zone. Yeah. Yep. Am I your safe zone? Yes. Yay! I love being your safe zone. So that's really important to me. And I hope that's something that, that rings true for you. Oh, we got a heart this morning. Can you guys hear Lizzie okay since I have like the microphone right here? Yeah, the microphone's right, oh, it's right there. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Right Yay! Cool. So... But I will be honest, it's been a journey. I did not always respect her. I I didn't always respect you either. I didn't respect you for like the longest freaking time. I know. I was like this mean mom. I really was. I was, I was mean. You were worse than mean. I was not worse than mean. I did not like lock you in closets. You wanted to. No, I never wanted to lock you in a closet. I'm going to call BS on that. She would have broken out of the closet. That's true. I mean, at, Hulk smash. at four years old, this kid put a hole in a wall, and she was itty bitty little girl. Now I'm only five one, so I, you can tell she's not too big now, right? She was itty bitty, itty bitty. Um, so there was a lot of disrespect between both of us, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, yep. um, a lot of miscommunication, a whole bunch of miscommunication. I think that's basically what it all was, really. Yeah, I agree. Miscommunication. Yeah. And I was totally stressed. I had just left an extremely abusive relationship. Anybody that was alive in 1996 knows all about the O.J. Simpson story. My ex's name is O.J. He drove a white car. We're just going to leave it at that. All right? So I had my own stress. She had her stress. After what she'd been through, I had mine. And we just couldn't communicate. It wasn't there. Right. The language just wasn't there. And so I had to learn. My responsibility as the parent, not hers, you pull up your big girl panties or big boy or big boy panties, big boy boxers, and you learn it because it's not up to them. It's up to you. You're the one that is their mentor. You are the one that facilitates their future. Yeah. And the choices they make then aren't about you. All you do is you're like the farmer. You plant the seed. What grows is a mystery. Yeah. You don't know what seed you're planting. You just know you're planting many and whichever one takes is what takes. Mm-hmm. But in order for that to take, it needs respect. Respect is like the sunshine and the rain. It's what they need. So, tomorrow is Friday. We're going to wrap up. Tomorrow's Friday. And I don't know what we're going to talk about yet because I honestly decide like the night before. I know they say if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But I'm kind of like a, a, a wing it kind of girl. Yeah. 
Yeah, because if I try to plan these things, I get really uptight and like snotty and um, I look like I've sat on a cucumber. And it's really not much fun. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's bad. You so we're just going to wait. I do. I talk, I talk like I have not if I live. <laughs> so I will think about it. I'll see what other people are really struggling with. And then I'll post it tonight. So if you want to, though, read any of the blogs, anything like that, you can go to maryharrington.com. And it's herring like the fish. It's like a ton of herring fish. So it's M-A-R-Y-H-E-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Later today, this will be uploaded to the YouTube channel, which is Inside Parenting. So you have to sort of scroll down because it doesn't have its own little URL to it yet because I don't have enough followers. So you know what? If you share this and they subscribe, we can actually get it to have a real name. I need like 100. So that means I need 90 more. You on it? Can you do that? We're going to get there. Hey, it's only been live, what, three days, four yeah. days? I think that's damn good. I've got 10. I'm like a, a tenth of the way there in less than a week. So I can get there with your help. So share it. Let me know. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I will definitely answer. Until then, I'll see you tomorrow morning. It's been Mornings with Mary. Bye-bye.